Well, hello, YouTubers. So let's go ahead and tackle this last video on the intro series, uh, which is a code first with a database that already exists. So the first thing that we're going to do, and actually we're going to use a tool to reverse engineer the database, because otherwise it's not much different from, there is no there is no difference between what we have just done with the uh, code first no database uh, we would simply be creating the exact same classes and uh, connecting to a database that already exists so let's do let's, let's name the solution code first uh, with database and um, we're gonna repeat the same process that uh, that we have been doing so far first thing we're gonna do is save the project we're going to right click uh, manage new get packages uh, look for the entity uh, framework 5.0 if you ever gets there so there you go it's installing but then but then now we need something when you right click your code we need something in here uh, an entity framework add-on uh, that reverse engineer the database into um, that reverse engineer the database into code. So we're gonna, for that we're going to go to Visual Studio Gallery and VisualStudioGallery.com. Actually, VisualStudioGallery.msdn.microsoft.com, and under search enter uh, Entity Power Tools. And this is what we want right here. Entity Framework Power Tools. It is an add-on by Microsoft. Okay, so let's click on it. Download. I downloaded a few times already because I was testing. So um, do you want to add this add-on for Visual Studio 2010? If you have other other uh, copies of Visual Studio, it's also going, it's going to prompt you to add for those as well. It's already it's already installed. I'm going to go ahead and close it. Uh, one thing that we're going to have to do here is to close Visual Studio and reopen. So there it is, closed. Let's go ahead and reopen Visual Studio. So at this point, let me go ahead and open the solution again. At this point, when we go to the uh, project level, right click, you should see an add-on that says Entity Framework and Reverse Engineer Code First. So I'm going to use that tool. It's going to ask me to point to the database that I'm using. And I want the Students Database. Click OK. So actually, that didn't work. And the reason why it didn't work is because I am using Visual Studio 2012 Package 1, and there is a little bug in there. Okay? So if yours doesn't work, if yours doesn't work like mine, and I wanted to show that on purpose, dev, I'll just try one more time. Students database, connections fine, open it. Yeah, there we go. So an error occurred while reversing engineering code first, see output window, and then over here it says that um, we have a problem with uh, cannot find processor for directive. Cannot find processor for directive T4VS host, okay? So I did some Googling around uh, on that, and one of the solutions is to actually remove a line from uh, from a file. So uh, let me go ahead and copy and paste this right here. Let me open the Explorer really quick. And I'll put that in the description, okay? So this is the location. Program Files 86, Microsoft 11, because we're using Visual Studio 2012, Common 7, ID, Extension, Microsoft Entity Framework Tools, uh, Templates, Includes, okay? This is the file that we're looking for we need to remove this line right here so usually what I do is that I make a copy of the file okay and then I usually I would name this 
original, like that. Okay, and then I am going to go ahead and change this, and I'm going to remove this line right here. All I'm doing is deleting that line, click save, and close. Okay, go ahead and close this. This is just a bug that they're going to they're going to get they're going to get it fixed. But let's try it one more time now that we that we made that little, little change. Right click, Entity Framework, Reverse Engineer. Let's point to the server. Give it a second there. Okay. I'm going to use my SQL authentication here. And looking for students database, test OK, click OK. what happened that worked this time I I don't know what happened before try again and then it worked so the files that generated it generated a few mapping files um, this is really not needed it's a little bit of overkill um, because um, Entity Framework can figure this out automatically, but since it's doing the reverse engineering, it's going to reverse engineer every single step of it. So these are the mapping files. These are our um, uh, POCO objects, the uh, plain old CLR objects, and uh, with uh, the navigation between them. And this is our uh, student database context. This is the one that it's actually going to do the communication between between the database and our application and of course here's the connection string it already adds the connection string to it very nicely done okay so just to prove that it works just fine let's go ahead and uh, write a, a little simple app here uh, db equals new student it's called a students database database context okay and let's just write a query in here so say var query equals from students in db dot students select s okay so um, the data that I have in here is the same data that I used earlier in code first I entered one record with uh, with a couple of uh, subjects in there. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and watch that video first so then uh, things make a little more sense. And I'm just going to iterate over that query result. So the query um, and student, and I'm going to say, so I'm going to use a string dot format, and I'm going to say student. student dot name and then in here I'm gonna do another for each loop and I'm gonna say for each so what am I looking for for the student dot subjects then this is going to be the subject So let's go ahead and put a breakpoint in here and query that really quick, see if everything goes okay. This is my window over here. And as I'm querying this, it hit the uh, it hit the student um, uh, database context. It's going to initialize uh, the student and it's going to initialize the uh, subject and now we're back to our main query and you found one student student Fabius Coppell and then it's gonna look for the subjects 
So it's actually returning something, but I forgot to do something there, which is a subject dot name of the subject. That's really what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and uh, debug this one more time. And I'm going to press. I keep forgetting that the uh, F10 is actually a hotkey hot uh, on uh, Camtasia. So let me go ahead and step over with this. So it creates the query, and now it's going to iterate through the results of the query. And then in there we have Fabio, and then we have the subjects in here. Subject mathematics, subject data structures, and then you can see that we actually got the data back from the database. And then once the uh, pro program exits, then it goes away. So as simple as that. Okay, so um, code first, actually I think it's pretty neat. Um, code first, when you reverse engineer, it looks pretty clean. It doesn't have the visual designer. I, I don't really care for that. Um, but I'm undecided. I'm undecided. Model first, database first, code first, with and with, without database. They're all pretty good approach approaches. No wonder they uh, they added all of them in the entity framework and they just let you choose from it. So at this point is really whatever you feel more comfortable with. The next video in the series is going to be um, a little more ad uh, advanced when it comes to querying and, and saving and retrieving. So, so creating, reading, updating and deleting data out of a SQL Server using entity framework regardless of how uh, regardless of how you uh, approach the initial setup of your entity framework, the initial workflow. Okay, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Bye.